editor of Michigan Today. In this episode of Listen in Michigan, my guest is Eric Woodhams, Senior Manager of Digital Media at UMS, or the University Musical Society. UMS, if you haven't heard, is a revered institution among fans of classical music, jazz, chamber music, dance, theater, and more. It's one of the oldest performing arts presenters in the country, older than Carnegie Hall, and hosts as many as 75 performances and more than 100 free educational activities every season. With Hill Auditorium as its home base, UMS has brought the most breathtaking array of artists to Ann Arbor since its debut in 1879. Famed opera singer Enrico Caruso came to campus, as well as composer-conductor Leonard Bernstein, dancer Merce Cunningham, who performed with John Cage, American soprano Leontine Price, pianist Vladimir Horowitz, and so many others. Now, UMS is taking its rich history to the digital audio space via Spotify and Apple Music. My guest, Eric, is creating UMS playlists to keep fans near and far engaged with the kind of content UMS presents. The initial lists showcase chamber arts, jazz masters, and piano solos featuring artists who've performed here. Going forward, Eric plans to ask artists to create their own lists to share with fans their personal favorites. With 140 seasons to choose from, the range of artists and music should delight longtime UMS fans as well as total newcomers. I mean, I love 60s garage rock, and here I am listening to Emerson String Quartet, Chick Corea, and a new group I've never before encountered with the best name ever, Snarky Puppy. <laughs> Just go to UMS.org slash playlists and check it out. But first, let's hear from Eric and a little of that Snarky Puppy. So many amazing names and an array of genres. I mean, from pianists, Vladimir Ashkenazi, ensembles like the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, uh, New York Philharmonic Philadelphia Orchestra has been here more than 50 times over the years, um, to uh, famous French mime, Marcel Marceau. I just saw his autograph actually on one of our walls the other day. Now that's a recording we all need to hear. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the sound up real high for that one. Oh my God. That's so funny. That's weird. I didn't know he was here. Yep. On a number of occasions. And the beauty is that we have our whole digitized archive of all of our past performances, our, our all program, the programs, uh, all the program books, yes. I should say, from the performances. So you can see exactly what the repertoire was, who the artists were, and it's open to the public. So you can just go to umsorg slash rewind and, you know, take a I deep dive. I love that thing. All the photographs, all those programs. Yep. I was pretty excited when I got that email about the playlists. Mostly because I thought, oh, my God, they're going to have, like, these amazing recordings. I know. Sadly, that's not the case. We actually don't have a lot of archival recordings, and it's really difficult for us to do because a lot of our guest artists are have contracts with record labels and mm -hmm. stuff like that. And it's great for them and great for us if they are coming here with things that they've recorded. Okay. Um, because it helps us promote yeah. sales, and it yeah. helps the artists then promote sales after the fact. Mm -hmm. But. We're very limited, usually, in what we can record or distribute. Yeah. But, I mean, the beauty of the Spotify and Apple Music playlist is everything's at your t fingertips mm -hmm. of, you know, most recorded and commercially recorded music yeah. of all time. And so it's a great way for us to promote what's coming up, take a look back at our history and all of that stuff. So hopefully that will be cool for people who are already UMS fans. I'm sure people will be thrilled. I mean, what kind have you gotten any feedback yet? Or Oh, yeah, people have been uh, following you know, making sure to follow on, on Spotify mm -hmm. and Apple Music so that they get the new updates. And we're planning to have new things published every week, whether it's updating an existing one with new fresh content or adding a whole new playlist. So. Okay. Based on the history of UMS, you obviously have a huge archive of artists to pull from. 141 years, yeah. <laughs> 141 years, that's amazing. Yeah. Such a tremendous legacy. Just professionalism and just the... the broad spectrum of talent that has come through here. Tell me about, you know, what, why you decided to do these playlists. Like, what does this entail and, you know, what's your plan? Sure. So I think there are a number of reasons why we want to make UMS more of a curator role in the digital space. Uh, when I first started here last year, I was putting together a set of digital objectives for the next year. And I was asking myself, how can we more effectively introduce upcoming artists and, and events 
to our audiences and remove any barriers of unfamiliarity mm -hmm. with them. How can we help resurface stories about amazing artists who've been part of our mm -hmm. 141 year history? And tying this all together, how can we become a better destination for great entertainment off the stage? And that's great for the for digital space. And so playlists check all those boxes mm -hmm. for me. And modern streaming services like Apple Music and Spotify are, you know, I consider them modern encyclopedias of sound in a way. And we can create a really accessible environment for listening and discovery for all of our audiences and followers. Well, I now know about Snarky Puppy, which I never knew about before. Yes. <laughs> they are amazing. <laughs> so they're coming, right? They're coming. They are our season opener concert this year. Uh, tickets for that will go on sale later this month. Um, coming up this season, there's an amazing jazz musician. I've seen his YouTube videos and, and listened to his new album called, uh, his name is Tar uh, Tarek Yomani, Okay. And he is Beirut born. And he has this, he, he improvises and he, he makes the sound that combines uh, classical American jazz with traditional Arabic mm. classical music. Mm -hmm. And the harmonies are like nothing you've ever heard in your life. Amazing. So he really breaks borders and barriers in the whole jazz genre. And I think he's going to be one of the stars in the new season. Excellent. Well, it's very interesting, too, like you were saying, the beautiful materials that UMS puts out. And I received the catalog every time, you know, it's a new season. But I do. I always feel kind of stupid. I'm like, I don't know who these people are. I don't know what this sounds like. And it's challenging to put down your money and buy a ticket for something. Yes, you'd like to educate yourself and expand your horizons. But now you have a place to go and, and listen to who's coming and decide now. Oh, yeah, I'll buy that ticket. You exactly. Exactly. I think that's really cool. So why did you start with chamber music and modern jazz masters? Those are the two lists that are up right now. Yep, and we just added a third one yesterday, okay. which is solo piano. Oh, great. Which is great. A oh. lot of fun. But I wanted to start with those two uh, playlists, chamber arts and modern jazz masters, because they re I wanted to highlight the sheer diversity of sounds that we're presenting in our chamber arts and jazz series over the course okay. of the next season and really defy stereotypes of what these genres of music sound like in the year 2019. Okay. Because chamber music is not just about hearing trios and quartets. It's really about experiencing the art of performance and live performance in an intimate space with one player to a part. And I think, I'm biased, but I think our <laughs> chamber arts programming this season is truly exceptional. Um, we are presenting a modern interpretation of Vivaldi's famous Four Seasons by uh, composer Max Richter, and it's kind of like Baroque meets Electronica. Oh. And if you're a fan of the Netflix show uh, uh, series uh, Chef's Table, okay, one of the movements from this recomposition is featured in the opening. Oh, cool! Uh, credits All right. of that show. So pay attention next time. I we, will. We're watching. <laughs> Um, and another really interesting performance on the series is going to be a composer's evening with a New York City-based sextet called Y Music. And this evening is celebrating some of America's most talented and innovative young composers, most of whom are women. Oh, right on. Yeah, so really innovative programming in the Chamber Arts series. Okay, who are some of those women? Caroline Shaw and Missy Mazzoli, mm -hmm. and also Detroit-based Sharon Nova. Okay, excellent. Yeah, it should be a wonderful performance. Okay, so when you said um, stereotypes about chamber arts, like what, what, what are some of those stereotypes? Oh, I think the stereotypes would be just tuxes, old men, <laughs> and... Uh, very prim and, and yeah, proper, Yeah, very prim kind of. and, you know, a string quartet. Okay. And we have some amazing string quartets coming as well. We have Emerson's String Quartet uh, coming, and they're always pushing... Uh, uh, the boundaries of what what they perform and bring to the stage is always fresh and exciting programming as well. Good. And then the modern jazz masters, who are some of uh, of those? I think our jazz series really crosses borders of instrumentation and inspiration, mm -hmm. uh, including the debut of Beirut-born pianist Tarek Yamani. Oh yeah. Uh, who, I'm super excited about that program. I think the the program with Chick Corea and mm -hmm. his trio is, is going to be phenomenal. And we also have our, our wonderful uh, celebration of the holidays with, oh, with yeah. Quentin Marsalis and his Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. How fun. I mean, what a fun job you have. I noticed in the email you mentioned like some guest curated lists and whatnot. So who are you hoping to have do some guest curation? 
I'm really excited for us to start monthly guest lists uh, curated by some of our artists and also by notable figures from across the University of Michigan community. Okay. Um, UMS presents more than 100 free education and community engagement activities each year, and a lot of the time this involves uh, partnership in connecting performances that are relevant programmatically with other departments at Michigan. Okay. This can be language arts and cultural studies, psychology, literature, certainly the campus museums, and of course the uh -huh. School of Music, Theater, and Dance, um, among many others. But this partnership for the guest list is just another way for us to extend the reach and impact of our connections with them across campus. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. You're hoping they'll share these lists. People will be turned on by the specific person who's curating the list. That will hopefully draw them in and maybe Absolutely. explore and other things. An, and it's an opportunity for those units of campus to also share with their followers and raise mm -hmm. awareness about, um, about our offerings as well. And I also think of us, because we're in an academic institution, we need to provide safe spaces to listen to new concepts and ideas. And I think there's a big opportunity to take advantage of that with our playlists. We're presenting a three-week No Safety Net Festival, which is uh, oh, three weeks of provocative theater works that are at the intersection of art and contemporary political issues. Mm. Issues like online radicalization, refugee crisis, uh, white privilege, the Me Too movement. And I would love for these festival guest artists to help curate special mm -hmm. playlists for us um, and these safe listening environments to help us open up our ears to new perspectives and sounds. You've worked at the DSO and you worked for Carnegie Hall. What do you think about Hill Auditorium and just the, the sonic experience there? And what would you tell people who've never been there before? Oh, I think Hill Auditorium is a magical place. And you can feel, just like Carnegie Hall, you can feel the history just mm -hmm. by entering the auditorium. Uh, well, we present performances in many fantastic venues across the University of Michigan campus. But of course, the crown jewel is Hill Auditorium. Absolutely. Uh, built in 1913 and considered by many people one of the world's best concert halls for its unique shape, which is kind of the shape of a megaphone. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps amplify the sound. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the Freeze Memorial Organ and its renowned acoustics. Uh, the clarity, you can hear a pin drop in it. The clarity and resonance you hear is pretty unbeatable for a hall of its size. It's pretty big at about 3,500 seats. Oh, I didn't realize it was that big. It's huge. Uh, it does not feel that big. It doesn't. It feels really intimate. It and does. I think that's because there's not a terrible seat in the house, mm -hmm. and it sounds great everywhere. I yeah. think the sound carries beautifully to every place you can sit, and I personally think that some of the best sound is way up in the balcony, mm -hmm. which makes those seats truly an exceptional value, especially exactly. for students, because tickets only start at $12 mm -hmm. for them. Are there some real... Uh, like coveted performers, like real people that you're you're dying to get your hands on and and really promote, like some artists that we've had come through here, or maybe versions of orchestras, or I don't know, just something that you're really excited about creating a playlist around. Or I think I'm really excited to share some of the historic moments uh, of our catalog more than anything else. Mm -hmm. um, I mentioned we're so lucky to have digitized all of our program book materials going back through our entire history. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the playlists and corresponding blog posts help us really unearth some of these amazing stories mm -hmm. uh, from our past and also connect us to current events in fun and interesting ways. Um, for instance, in July, we celebrate 50 years from the first moon landing mm -hmm. in 1969. And we've created a whole blog and playlist that feature 10 amazing moon-inspired <laughs> works that we've presented since the late 1800s. How great. Yeah. And on the blog page, you can even dive deeper and explore the individual programs or how many times each work has been presented mm -hmm. over the course of the years. Um, and this includes stuff from piano legends like Vladimir Ashkenazi to modern stars like Broadway's Audra McDonald. Mm -hmm. um, in doing all this research, a couple tracks were familiar fam favorites, like Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata, um, but the vast majority were completely new to some of our ears, and these were really incredible finds mm -hmm. to discover and be able to share on the playlists. So fun. Yeah, yeah I think it's, I mean, for people who uh, are not local anymore, I'm sure this will be very exciting for them. Exactly, and even if you haven't been here, connecting some of these 
iconic artists to us is is just so heartwarming. Mm -hmm. uh, another wonderful story we're working on is the 100th anniversary of famed Italian tenor Enrico Caruso's mm -hmm. 1919 debut at UMS, which was delayed twice because of the flu pandemic after World War I. Mm -hmm. And we're so lucky here at U of M we have access to the digitized archives of the Michigan Daily newspaper. Mm -hmm. And so we have all these great newspaper clippings from uh, Caruso is canceled, Caruso is coming back, <laughs> and uh, reviews and, uh, and all of this. And combining that with playlists of his recordings and one-of-a-kind voice just brings even more life and context to the story of the great lengths it took to finally get him here at Hill Auditorium. Yeah, and that's just one of about a million amazing stories that have happened. You can only imagine if that dressing room could talk, you know? I mean, exactly, if these <laughs> walls could talk. <laughs> There's so much good stuff. So UMS is one of the oldest performing arts presenters in the United States. It uh, was founded in 1879, which means that we're heading into our 141st season now, which is pretty that's remarkable. Amazing. That means we're older than Carnegie Hall as a presenting institution. Incredible. So UMS originally brought great orchestras and classical musicians and singers from all around the world to perform in Ann Arbor. Um, a lot of people still think of us as just performing classical music, but actually over the last few decades, we've vastly expanded our repertoire of what we present to include international jazz and world music, as well as theater and dance. Okay. And we present in venues throughout campus and even some uh, performances in Detroit next season. Great. We present more than 100 free educational and community engagement activities mm -hmm. every year. These include things like K through 12 school day performances, master classes, night school 101s as we call them, and artist lectures and Q and A's. We really aim to find ways of connecting our artists with audiences of all ages in special ways. We know for so many of our singers and dance companies and and uh, musicians of, who often give master classes at uh, SMTD, I think that the feeling is, is mutual, that the students love it so much, but also I think the artists really have such a great time being here at Michigan mm -hmm. and are always impressed by the level of talent of our students. And then the, just the quality of Hill, just the, just the most amazing place to perform. I, I, I don't think anyone who's performed there has had a bad word to say about it. I mean, I think everyone's in love with it. Especially the singers. <laughs> There's kind of this renowned sweet spot on stage really? too um that is on if if you look at where the piano lift mm -hmm. is from on the on the hill auditorium stage on the <laughs> sides of those there's a sweet spot and if a singer is directly singing from that point they can hear the way that their voice resonate in the hall in such a special and powerful way it's it's truly incredible and it feels like you're you're speaking directly to the audience member in the last row of the balcony. That's how it feels when you're in there. Exactly. I love it. Oh, it's so exciting. I did get to see Audra McDonald there. That was amazing. She's one of our favorites. She's just fantastic. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and then I also saw David Sedaris, not related to UMS, but just, you know, the author speaking. And again, it was one of those deals where if you had a question, you, you could almost ask your question in a normal speaking voice, like from the last row of the balcony, and he could hear you. <laughs> in a crowd of 3,500 people. Yeah. It's amazing. It's so, it, we're so lucky. Our entire 2019-20 season is available to preview at UMS.org. Some important dates coming up. Our public on-sale date for the season opener with Snarky Puppy is on July 25th. And then our public single ticket day is on August 7th. Okay. And student tickets will be available starting August 29th. And um, we also have a little-known program uh, that that we're trying to make more known. Uh, it's called the Burt's Ticket, and that is a free UMS ticket for uh, first and second year University of Michigan students. So this is one way at least to get to them. Get It's like get to people where they live, you know. Exactly. And UMS, we actually have one of the highest um, student attendance rates amongst our peers in university arts presenters. So all of all information about that can be found at ums.org slash students. That's but it's nice. really easy. You can just buy your tickets online um, at any time. 
And then when you can't come to a show, you can just plug in your earbuds and turn up the volume. Yep, and you know, hear a lot of the great music from our artists on stage. Perfect. Thanks so much for listening. Now go to Spotify and Apple Music and get yourself some culture and buy a UMS ticket next time you're in Ann Arbor. You will not be disappointed no matter who you go see. Okay, that's it for now. You can find Listen in Michigan at Google Play Music, iTunes, TuneIn, and Stitcher, as well as at michigantoday.umich.edu. All right, see you next month. Until then, as always, go blue.